Hello guys, welcome back to Take Dose and in this video we will see the cinema seat allocation problem which is from lead code number 1386 and this is based on greedy algorithm. Let's uh, see the problem statement. In this problem, a cinema has n rows of seat numbered from 1 to n and there are 10 seats in each of the row. So the number of columns per row is fixed and they are labeled from 1 to 10 as you can see here 1 to 10 for each of the rows. Now given the array reserved seat containing the number of seats already reserved for example reserved seat at i3 8 uh, will say that the row number 3 and column number 8 is already reserved okay now uh, return the maximum number of four person grouping you can assign on the cinema seat a four person group occupies four adjacent seats in one single row seats across an aisle are not considered to be adjacent but there is an exceptional case on which an aisle split a four person group in that case the aisle split a four person group in the middle which means to have two people on each side you can read this example let's go to our board in order to uh, get better understanding let's say that uh, in this case we are given n rows and each of the rows have 10 columns which is already fixed on the right hand side let's say this is row number one row number two row number three now our goal is to find the maximum number of four group size assignment and uh, there are certain rules to it the first rule is all the four must be contiguous okay so there should be no aisle in between there should be no break and this is only possible in the middle part okay which is numbered from four five six to seven okay if you are talking about all the contiguous four person assignment it is only possible in the middle column not on the left or right side but then there was an exception which says that seats across aisle are only considered if divided 50 50 that means a four person group if they are sitting contiguously across the aisle where two people live on the left side and two people are assigned on the right side then it will be a valid grouping otherwise it will be invalid so you see these two are valid grouping if you had three on one side and one on the other it will be invalid and vice versa okay these three are actually the only valid cases you can have for the four person grouping. Let's see all the cases which are involved in this problem and then it will be very easy to code it. Let's uh, see case by case. Case A is when the entire row is empty and none of the seat is reserved. So if none of the seat is reserved, either you assign one group in the middle and that is fine. But then if you assign one group in the middle, the entire row will be consumed. So it's better that you go with another type of assignment across the aisle so you can use both the part of the aisle and you can have two groupings right so i want to maximize the number of group assignment therefore i'll go with this configuration and so if i have an empty row i will always be able to assign exactly two groups no less than two no more than two okay exactly two groups so this is case a i will be marking all these cases in my code so when you go and read the code then uh, you can easily relate to what i have explained now let's uh, look at case case B. In case B and all the cases from B to E, I will consider that there are two crosses that means two reserved seat in the same row. So how to deal with that? So let's say that you have two reserved seat, but one of the seat is at number one, number one slot and the another one is at 10. Then this is equivalent to being an empty row and still you can assign two groupings. So if you have the two consecutive seat assigned uh, to number one and number 10, you will have uh, exactly two groupings again. Okay, let's look at case C. In case C, uh, we just can have one assignment because it says that, uh, I mean, if you are dealing with the two consecutive reserved seats, so if the first one is less than the seat number four, and if the right one is greater than the seat number seven, in this case, you can use the middle part and you can assign a group for it okay so this c must only be checked after b because uh, i mean this case b exactly fits into case c because the left assignment is less than four and the right assignment is greater than seven therefore it should come in the else if part okay because if b is not hitting then we will check for c now let's look at the next case in case d we are looking at the first assigned seat at being at one and the second assigned seat as as some value greater than five okay in this case actually uh, you can take one grouping and this should also come in the else if part after this okay and when i come to the e part 
which is the last case of this chain from b to e it's an entire if else if chain now uh, i mean one of the assignment should be less than 6 and another assignment should be exactly at 10 so we can have a group in between okay so these are all the if else if chain from b to e i hope this is clear the first case was for an entirely empty row let's look at the next set of cases uh, the next set of cases is all about if you have just a single reserved seat then if you want to find how many groups are possible to the right of it and to the left of it so f case is saying about if you have a reserved seat how many groups can you fit in the same row and to the right of it so this case is about if the reserved seat is at one then you can assign exactly two groups case g says that if the reserved seat is at less than six value then you can exactly assign one group so case f and g were similar uh, it was just looking on the right side uh, trying to assign the group on the right side of the reserved seat while h and i will try to assign to the left side okay so let's look at this for this 10 if you want to assign the groups to the left of it then if the uh, reserved seat is at 10 you can assign exactly two groups and uh, if this one like is at greater than five value then you can assign exactly one group to the left of it now if you are not understanding about why are we assigning to the right and left let's take a dry run and actually try to understand about what happens i would like to announce about our live training programs data structures and algorithms which is interview dose and system design which is design dose if you are looking for making a switch from service to product based or even make a product based to product based top tier switch and aiming for your dream company this is the best curriculum you can ever join i'll be your mentor throughout the cohort and i will help you clear all your doubts in the one-on-one -on -one sessions you can know more about this by querying us on the whatsapp number or you can also visit our website techdose.co.in now in this case i have taken n value equals to 5 and these are the assignment now this input will be given in the form of i mean xy pair where it says what is the row number and what is the column number which is reserved so all these reserved assignments are shown in the diagram okay now in this case uh, what we can do is for the first point we have to find what is the assignment on the left side of it isn't it what is the assignment to the left side of it and also i will have to find what is the assignment to the right side of it okay and the same goes for every other point what is the assignment to the left and to the right to the left and to the right so instead of taking all this kind of headache right we can actually give two dummy inputs so there can be multiple ways of solving this how i have solved is i have put a dummy variable at the end a reserved seat at 0 comma 10 and another reserved seat at n plus 1 which is 6 comma 1 okay so that these two are actually blocking so i will have 0 comma 10 and i will have uh, 6 comma 1 in this case okay so whenever i want to find what is to the left of it i will just be comparing every time with just the previous uh, reserved seats and i can exactly find out how many groupings can be possible in between so let's solve it in this way okay 0 comma 10 why did i take 0 comma 10 and not 0 comma 9 or 0 comma 8 because i want to kill the possibility of having any group in the 0th row because this is invalid group and the same goes for 6 comma 1 why didn't i take 6 comma 4 or 6 comma 5 because 6 row is actually invalid i am just putting it as a dummy and so i want to kill any possibility of forming a group in uh, this sixth row so i will just be putting at six comma one okay so that no vacant space is present so now uh, let's solve it so when you are at one comma six you compare with the previous reserved seat which is zero comma ten are they in the same row i mean they are not in the same row because the because the x coordinate is different right the row number is different so they are not in the same row so if they are not in the same row maybe there will be some empty rows in between so we have to count the number of empty rows in this case it will be 1 minus 0 but 1 minus 0 is only giving you 1 and it is saying that there is one empty row but it is wrong there are zero empty rows right so what you need to do is take the r value of i and subtract it with the r value of the previous coordinate and subtract minus 1 to compensate okay and this will give you 0 1 minus 0 minus 1 will be 0 so there are zero empty rows in between because what we had seen is in case a if we have an empty row you have to add 
two groupings for the empty rows. So let's say we had uh, two empty rows. Then you will be multiplying it with two and you will accommodate four groups there. Okay. So you will be having a counter for the groups. Let's take the counter to be equals to zero currently. Since these two reserved seats were not in the same row, I found uh, the number of empty rows in between and it is equivalent to zero. Now what I need to do is I need to find to the right of it how many groups I can fit and to the left of it how many groups I can fit. So since we know that this is already 10 to the right of it there will be no assignment. To the left of this 1 comma 6 which case is this fitting? If you can see it visually it is the case of greater than 5. If you are greater than 5 then you will be accommodating exactly one group isn't it? So you can look at uh, that case which is greater than 5. Okay. So this one, case number I, if you are assigning a reserved seat greater than 5 and if you have not, no reserved seat to the left of it, then definitely you can uh, have one group there. Right. So this is case number I. Now we are done with this. Let's process the next point, which is 3 comma 9. Now, if you compare it with the previous point, are they in the same row? No, they are not in the same row. How many empty rows are in between 3 minus 1 minus 1? which is equals to 1. So there is one empty row and one empty row will uh, have two groups. So multiply it by 2 and you will add this value and you will have three group assigned. So first group was here, which is group 1. Then you have the next group here. This is group 2 and this is group 3. Okay. Now we are talking about this to the left of this point. Okay. To the left of this point and to the right of this point in the same row. Now, as you can see, to the right of it, you cannot fit anything because if you want to fit anything, it has to be less than 6, but it is already marked at 6. So you cannot fit anything here. And at this point, 3, 9, if you want to fit it, then if this column number was 10, then you could have had two groups. But if it is less than 10 and if it is, uh, let's say, greater than 5, right, it has to be to the right of this point then you can fit a group here and yes you can fit a group here group 4 so add one extra group for it and you are done now we will be processing 4 comma 1 now at 4 comma 1 again you check that uh, these two rows are different so what is the number of uh, empty rows in between it is 0 4 minus 3 minus 1 is 0 right now how many are there to the left of it it is already at index 1 so 0 and how many uh, groups to the right of it it is already at 9 so it will also be 0 right so this is done. Let's process this 4 comma 10. Now this 4 comma 10 and 4 comma 1 are in the same row. And therefore you see that it fits the case that the uh, previous reserved seat is at 1 and the next reserved seat is at 10. Therefore you can have two groupings there. Okay, so add two groups for it. This becomes 6. This is uh, group 5 and this is group 6. Now let's process the next part which is 5 comma 6. Uh, now when you process 5 comma 6 again 4 comma 10 is in a different row do you have any empty rows in between no 5 minus 4 minus 1 is 0 okay so find out how many you can fit to the right of it 0 because this is already uh, column number 10 how many you can fit to the left of it this is 6 which is greater than 5 so yes i can fit it but according to the diagram you see this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so according to this i should have put a cross here instead of at 5 okay this is 5 comma 6 right so this is to the right of 5 so definitely i can fit a group here which is group 7 so add one for it right and now we are done let's go to the next point and again you are in a different row so do we have any empty rows in between no we don't have any rows so how many we can fit to the left of it zero and to the right of it this is already at six it is not less than six otherwise we would have fit one extra group for it so we cannot fit anything and the and the answer will be seven Okay, once we are done with the last item, we are done and the answer is 7 in this case. Now let's look at the code. If you can see the code, we have the reserved seats. We have pushed back the two dummy items. One the first item, another one is the last item. Then I will be sorting all the points so that I can uh, actually process left to right and top down order. Now after this, these are all the cases. I have marked all the cases as case A, F, G, H, I, and B, C, D, E. Okay, so you can just go through them. It is just a very simple if else statement and I think it will be very clear once you read it. And at the end we will be returning the count variable which will be counting the number of groupings. Okay. I hope you are able to understand this problem. Like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.